So, today in this lecture, I will discuss about the uh, basic components in laboratory. So, this uh, basically I discuss about the resistor, capacitor, inductor. So, these three are very basic components uh, uh, electrical or electronics components uh, in the lab and they are very important it is not uh, that you will use uh, this uh, components in your lab, but uh, in future uh, you need these components to uh, uh, to everywhere, uh, wherever you want to plan to uh, uh, fabricate some instruments or to set up some experiments. So, this components is uh, is very essential and then just I will show you the some different types of wires and connectors uh, we use in laboratory. So, first is uh, this very uh, common uh, components that is the uh, resistance box right. So, this box figure I have taken. So, basically uh, from our lab. Uh, so, this uh, resistance box and all of you have seen in laboratory. So, this resistance box here is a resistance is 1, 2, then 5, 10 right the up to it is the 1 it is a 10,000 ohm. Okay. So, uh, so, these two are the uh, end connection. So, we, we we connect these two in our circuit. So, when we connect these two in our circuit, so this this is the resistance included in the circuit. So, you know this uh, these are the key. Okay. So, when I put key here that means, this resistance 1 is shorted. Okay. So, this resistance 1 is shorted. So, it will not include it will not be included in the circuit. So, this just this key we use to shorten this resistance so, but to bypass this resistance basically. So, if I put this way this two resistance. So, this wherever I have put. So, this resistance will not be included in the circuit. So, open part so, this will be included in the circuit. Okay. So, this is the principle of using this resistance box. right? So, uh, so how it uh, how it is happening? Uh, so, if you want to see, so when I I put it here, so I am telling this resistance is not included in the circuit. Okay. So, what is the mechanism? Uh, here we have used so that this putting key is uh, uh, is basically uh, excluding the this resistance and opening the key is basically uh, including the resistance. So, if you want to know, so we have to open this box and see what is in inside. So, already there is the two, two screw uh, are there, two four screws are there. So, this if I already I have uh, unscrewed it and if I open it, so you can see, so you can see this box, you can see the box, it is the wooden box, nothing is inside, okay. but opposite side of this uh, resistance box this top part is if we just rotate it. So, what you are seeing? You are seeing just this you see these are this wire threaded right here uh, very thin wire. So, this uh, uh, it is it is we have uh, rounded it on on a some insulating pillars okay so if you see this one this one this it's uh, is very few turn of wires here 
and here maximum turns of wires are here. So, if you see this one here it is written this resistance is 1 right resistance is 1 it is written resistance is 1. So, this is basically this one and this other one this one where the maximum turns are there same wire maximum turns are there. So, if you just see what it is so he is the maximum resistance right 10000 ohm. So, so basically uh, it is uh, why here more number of turns are there than this one because this wire itself gives resistance. So, this resistance uh, is basically uh, is r equal to rho L by A r equal to rho L by A. So, uh, rho is the resistivity of the of the uh, material uh, of this wire. Okay. The wire is made of some material right. So, resistivity of this material is is uh, rho and into L divided by A right. So, L is length of the wire and A is the radius of the wire. So, radius of the wire also here fixed. Okay. So, rho and A not A is radius is the area cross section area of the wire okay. cross section area of the wire. So, uh, that is also fixed. So, now uh, if you take more and more length so resistance will be more and more. So, here this resistance will varies with the length of the of the wire. Okay. So, here this highest length of the wire. So, this number of turns is uh, more. Okay. So, this is the just principle here. Now, you can see each one is uh, each one is connected. So, this resistance okay, it is connected by this wire with the next one then it is connected with the next one. So, that way. So, all are connected all are connected. So, one end is uh, here and another end is here. Okay. So, this is the two end. Now, from here uh, now from here okay. so, it is not that the two end is basically here uh, this again is connected in this here okay. these two is connected here. So, it is basically starting from here to this then it is from top it is connected it is connected then come back and then it is uh, these are the two uh, place where they are connected here they are connected here. Okay. So, so basically now you understand this this is basically one resistance you know it is a one resistance uh, from in bottom it is the one uh, one wire not resistance it is a one wire. Now, this now they are divided into different parts they are divided into different parts okay. mm, and that it is divided from here uh, means uh, uh, here this is the is a breaking point this is a continuously it can be continuously may be continuously connected if this holes is not there. Okay. So, if I put put this okay. so then it is a it will be it will be connected it will be connected. So, current when it will go, so there will be two paths one it can go through this wire okay, or another it can go through this one. Okay. So, since this is less resistive path, so current will flow this way okay. when it will come here. So, this path is, is open means it is a very high resistance. So, uh, infinite resistance, so current will not go this way it will then it will go through this wire. Okay. So, bypass bypassing these two it will go this with the through the third one. Okay. So, that way uh, this uh, 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 this resistance box is fabricated and mechanism is very simple, but interesting. So, now uh, after after seeing this one now you uh, when you will use it you will understand that when you are putting why it is shortened when you are taking out 
then why this resistance is included. Okay. So, so, this is the box we used in the laboratory as well as uh, uh, there are other uh, resistance also use this rheostat is another kind. So, it is not with me now here, but rheostat you know this they are also this resistance of the oil. So, this oil is uh, 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 wounded on a on a cylinder okay. and these two ends are connected at this uh, at the uh, two, two, two uh, uh, I think uh, two pillar. Uh, from where we, we we take the connection we uh, uh, in the circuit okay so but there is a another jo jockey okay the ski kind of thing so it can we can move it movable jockey okay so uh, if you don't use the jockey so when you will use this to end then whole resistance of this rheostat will be used. so it will it will be it will no longer be variable resistance. So, but if you use one end uh, and other end if you use in the circuit this jockey one. So, then basically um, you are using uh, the resistance between the jockey and this uh, one end. So, in between whatever the number of turns are there or length of the uh, wires are there. So, that 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 resistance will be included other part will not be included. So, that way basically we are varying the resistance means we are changing the basically effective length of the wire uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, we are getting variable resistance. Okay. So, so this very important uh, component for the lab and um, for many purposes it is used and resistance of a material is very uh, very useful for different purpose. It is a uh, whatever the simple resistance I told you there are different kind of resistance. Resistance of the material changes with temperature okay. like thermistor it is uh, it is a thermistor it is another resistance. So, uh, length of the oil is fixed. Now, if you change the temperature of the of this oil, then its resistance changes. So, this is called this is basically thermistor. So, in other way also it can be it can be uh, fabricated, uh, but principle is that if you uh, if you change the temperature of the of the material, uh, it may be it may be oil or it may be in other form. So, re its resistance will change. So, that way if you change the resistance, so it is called um, thermo resistance uh, or thermistor, okay, thermistor and then also another type of resistance is there, this is called magneto resistance uh, means if you uh, if you apply magnetic field in a material maybe in form of wire or in other form, then the resistance of this wire or this uh, material changes uh, with magnetic field. Okay, so this then this 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 type of resistance is called magnetic resistance, right? So different kind of resistance are there, there, and it has various application in device. Okay, so whatever here, just I I am telling about the resistance. It's not the simple resistance you are using in the in the in your lab. So uh, basic whatever the basic. Uh, formula for the resistance r equal to rho l by a. So, that is a very important formula and using this formula uh, basically taking the wire uh, of different uh, different material means rho will be different, different length or different cross section. So, you can vary the resistance you can you can. So, so, uh, so uh, you, you can use this this formula for your application, which what you want to do, and uh, which one you want to vary, either rho want to vary, or l you want to vary, or a you want to vary. Okay, so uh, so this uh, rho is basically it varies with temperature, rho it varies with the uh, magnetic field. Okay, so uh, so that way. Uh, 
uh, it is a you will get resistance due to the change of change of temperature, resistance due to the change of the magnetic field etcetera. Okay. So, it will be uh, so here just uh, I showed you that how the just using wire and just rounding this wire uh, and uh, uh, using the suitable mechanism how the resistance uh, whatever we used in our circuit are made of. Okay. So, next one next component is basically uh, here just I have a picture and showed you the same thing. Okay. So, yeah. So, next uh, is is basically uh, uh, other two components this uh, uh, this capacitor and and the uh, inductor. So, here my intention is to show you that that in electronic circuit or electrical circuit you just use the commercial resistance, commercial resistance, commercial uh, capacitor, commercial capacitor right commercial capacitor okay and commercial inductor commercial inductor so this is the commercial uh, resistor right so uh, uh, so if you use this one then it is difficult to uh, uh, tell how it is made right it may not be it is oil inside this one. So, as I told this it can be in different form okay. because uh, as I told this uh, uh, not only wire it can be some some um, foil kind of things some some uh, yeah uh, like slide this very thin foil this we tell also film. So, this film kind of thing. So, whatever the inside that without bothering that one just we use this and whatever the color code from color code uh, you can find out what is the resistance. Okay. So, this we use if we use this one. So, without knowing anything you know that this is the this much resistance. So, for your circuit you need this resistance. So, you can connect. So, these two ends are there you can connect. Okay. So, this is the commercial resistance. So, this is a commercial inductor, this is a commercial inductor. Now, commercial inductor means somebody uh, told you this is the uh, this is the this is the I think few Henry not Henry micro Henry or nano Henry uh, uh, this uh, of uh, inductance is few few micro Henry or nano Henry or milli Henry whatever. So, for your circuit whatever you uh, that how much Henry you need or milli Henry you need. So, depending on that you can choose this commercial uh, inductor. Okay. So, this generally does not give any feelings uh, of the uh, of the of the inductors of the inductance whatever the definition we have read this also does not give feelings with the definition of resistance uh, we are familiar with. Similarly, these are the commercial capacitor I think it is a value is written 100 uh, it is the 1000 microfarad 1000 microfarad here it is written I think yeah it is difficult to see, but I think here you can see 1000 here I can see is the 1000 microfarad yes 1000 microfarad and this one is uh, 2200 microfarad and this one is 20 uh, 22 microfarad probably anyway so these are the again commercial capacitor commercial capacitor these three are commercial capacitor now again this this does not give any any again uh, feelings about the uh, about about the definition what ever we know uh, 
uh, what is capacitor ok. So, what is capacitor whatever definition we know. So, when you are using commercial one, so that is so it is difficult to uh, connect with with the with the fabrication of this capacitor with your with your uh, with our definition ok. So, fine so commercial one is we have to use also let us uh, say about this about this capacitor. So, what what we have learned what is the definition of the capacitor this two parallel plate two parallel plate is separated by the um, dielectric ok. Then it is a capacitor we tell parallel plate capacitor or it can be cylindrical also this two cylindrical uh, coaxial cylinders ok. So, between these two coaxial cylinder if uh, uh, some dielectrics is there then that also it forms a capacitor cylindrical capacitor. So, simple one is the two parallel plate is separated two parallel two parallel two metal plates if you place them in parallel and they are separated by dielectric it can be ear ok ear also dielectric or some dielectric material then that is the capacitor we know that is the definition of the capacitor right. So, but unfortunately we never we never fabricated such type of capacitor or most of the student have not seen this type of metal capacitors ok or we know the definition. Now, I have doubt whether we believe whether we believe that this if I take a two piece of metal plate and if I place them in parallel. So, this will act as a capacitor ok because this type of demonstration generally we do not we do not give the student ok and uh, uh, so, so, uh, so whatever the definition I told you that we read for capacitor and now in lab we are using this type of capacitor ok. So, my point is there is no connection between this our definition and this one as if these two words are separate. So, but here I want to show you I want to uh, show you the real this you can fabricate capacitor parallel plate capacitor and that has enormous use for for, for device fabrication. So, I think if you take two metal plate here I have two metal plate ok ok two metal plate now these two metal plate uh, if you can put them uh, parallel way this way ok ok. So, now you have to make them separated ok. So, you have to hold them ok. So, you need some arrangement. So, if you can uh, make this arrangement then this will this is a capacitor parallel plate capacitor and you can use as a capacitor. So, I have a in my lab I use this parallel uh, plate capacitor for some uh, for some for, for for a very interesting research equipment ok. Uh, probably if I I will discuss in some times. So, this type of capacitors uh, I will show you uh, as probably earlier I have shown you now also you can see this the capacitor in my lab uh, this we are using you see this two parallel plate capacitors. Now, uh, this I have to I have to place uh, they these two has to be isolated you know. So, I have to use some insulator. So, here in between I have used this teflon insulator teflon piece. So, they are separated and I have to hold them. So, I have used screw and on top of screw you can see this again teflon I have used because through screw there should not be any uh, uh, contact ok with this metal plate. So, these two plate should be electrically isolated for that we are using the uh, teflon that is insulator to isolate them. Now, this is a parallel plate capacitor ok. 
Now, if we apply voltage between this, this two plate, okay. so then you will get uh, what you will get. So, this capacitor plate, this capacitor basically is used to produce electric field. This parallel plate capacitor is used to uh, is used to uh, produce electric field because you see when you will measure when you want to study uh, some sample as a function of electric field like dielectric material okay so this is very sensitive to the to the electric field like magnetic material it is very sensitive to the magnetic field okay so dielectric material it is very sensitive to the electric field okay so how to produce magnetic field either you can take permanent magnet as i have shown you in case of voltmeter galvanometer so uh, so also people can use the electromagnet okay so that also i will show you in sometimes for producing magnetic field uh, so in lab and that magnetic field we use for 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 studying some property of the material right like this uh, magneto resistance if you want to measure the change of resistance of a material as a function of magnetic field so you have to apply magnetic field and you have to vary magnetic field so you have to know how to produce magnetic field in the laboratory that also i will i will uh, sometimes uh, i will uh, discuss i will show you okay similarly uh, you need to produce my uh, electric field in laboratory so how to produce electric field in the laboratory so this is the capacitor parallel plate capacitor is used to produce electric field uh, in the laboratory means you see uh, the where you will get the electric field basically this electric field will be between these two plates if you apply voltage uh, between these two plate okay so then there will be electric field in this in between these two plates so because you know this uh, uh, what is the relation between the electric field and voltage the relation between electric field and voltage is uh, here i will write relation is um, electric field e equal to v by d okay means voltage you have applied to this capacitor plate okay and if separation between them is d okay so electric field will be v by d so this capacitor parallel plate capacitor is used in the laboratory to produce the electric field okay so this is just one application i told uh, this parallel plate capacitor i used uh, for other purpose in research equipment so that i will not discuss now but uh, i will tell you so this this is uh, consistent with the with our definition right whatever we read from class 9 8 okay mm, okay so but unfortunately we never we never demonstrate we never see this type of capacitor so this is the capacitor okay so uh, so commercial one whatever so it is made like this or some cylindrical some other way so inside what is there but but for producing like for producing electric field you cannot use this capacitor right so this uh, this you can use just for uh, where you need this some uh, some capacitor capacitance uh, so there you can use in that circuit but this type of capacitor whatever uh, if you from definition you can fabricate and you can uh, you can fabricate and uh, you can use for different application i told you just two application one is producing electric field in the laboratory another is uh, another is uh, uh, i use uh, in my research for some purpose that i will discuss later on okay this fine so that is the about so here basically whatever commercial is there fine but apart from that from your definition whatever you have learned in your class 8 9 10 11 12 okay so practically you should demonstrate it and it has many practical application so uh, one of them is capacitor so that i showed you okay and 
about resistance this again this register commercial uh, this registers is uh, one type another type this from original resistance how uh, it is uh, uh, from r equal to r rho l by a r rho l by a so from this definition okay taking different material having different rho taking different length or taking different uh, you can you can fabricate you can uh, fabricate your uh, uh, your own resistance okay so and that resistance box i showed you so that based on this uh, just definition okay and uh, so the way i am so the way you have learned the definition the same way i am i am trying to show you uh, these components so that wherever you need you can think you can uh, think to fabricate yourself okay so so next one is inductor inductor as i told this showed you this is the commercial inductor this is a commercial inductor okay it's a few uh, microhenry value so this you can use but by definition from definition uh, or how to fabricate the inductor so basically this hmm, these are the these are the basically inductor you know so this just i have i have so from a straight wire so i have rolled out i just turned on a uh, i think on a pencil or or here itself you can uh, so here i'll show you so you see this the wire this is the simple wire this is the simple wire okay this is the simple wire now from there i can if i want to make inductor so just it's simple by definition okay just roll it so this is the inductor you know now this is the inductor okay okay this is the inductor so yeah so this is the inductor okay the same way you have made it and this is so important component so it has so many application you see if you just see this inductor and your definition is different okay so with definition you cannot connect this one but from the definition if you according to definition if you just you are able to fabricate this inductor then you can think of many application of this inductor okay so what is inductor when this uh, uh, when this wire in a in a coil form okay it is uh, what is called is uh, 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 it is uh, okay it is a spring kind of things no so it is uh, it's, uh, yeah a spring kind of things the spring kind of things okay so if you if you if you turn it rotate it on a in this form so and you connect with in a electrical circuit so this will act as inductor okay so so what is the source of inductance from where this inductance is coming is basically this the coil which is used to produce the magnetic field okay you know current carrying conductor gives the magnetic field okay so this also this if oil is state it will give magnetic field if this oil is in this form okay it is the solenoid yeah i was forgetting the name it is the form of solenoid you know okay so if current so if current passes through this it was state it was straight now it is in uh, solenoid form okay so if current passes through this so it will produce magnetic field okay so maximum magnetic field you will get at the center okay so if it is infinitely long this solenoid is infinitely long 
then the magnetic field it produces that is B equal to magnetic field it produces that is B equal to I in A. Okay. What is I? Is current passing through this coil. Okay. What is N? N is number of turns per unit length number of turns per unit because it is infinitely long is very long solenoid. So, n is number of turns per unit length okay, of the solenoid and a is the a is the area a is the area of this of this okay, of this coil. Okay. So, this will be give the magnetic field. Now, current is flowing through this coil now it is giving magnetic field. Now, when magnetic field produced you know this it has south pole and north pole okay. there is no monopole. Okay. So, uh, so uh, magnetic field is nothing but the uh, magnetic uh, lines of force okay, passing through a per passing through per unit area. Okay. So, uh, B equal to I n A, yes, I think so. So, uh, so flux that is we tell the flux lines of force, magnetic lines of force we tell the flux. Okay. So, flux will come out from this solenoid, okay. flux per unit. So, flux we generally write phi, phi. So, this phi per unit area per unit area passing through per unit area whatever here if you place uh, some area. So, total flux passing through this area. So, now if you divide it by this area then that is the magnetic field at that point. Okay. So, magnetic field passing through this uh, through this through this uh, through this space. Okay. So, now there is a lines of force this lines of force where it will go it has to come back to the other end okay. it has to come back to the other end. So, it has to make close uh, magnetic lines okay. that means this coil is producing the magnetic field okay, due to the current in this coil in this solenoid. Now, this field is outside you can get anywhere. Now, this that field is due to the lines of force. Now, the same lines of force is linked with this coil because it is coming back it has to come back. So, it link with this uh, same coil again. Okay. So, flux flux now flux link with this coil if it is capital phi if it is capital phi flux link with this coil if it is uh, capital phi and this capital phi is basically flux link with each turn of the coil. Okay. So, this if it is phi then total number of turns in the solenoid because from this last end to the another last end okay, or uh, uh, yeah other end. So, it has to it, it has to come back. So, it will uh, so linkage of this flux with all turns. So, for each turn if it is capital phi and if total number of turns is n in this solenoid. So, total flux link with this coil is phi n. Okay. So, this is basically is by definition it is it is a equal to L i. Okay. I is the current passing through this uh, through this uh, uh, solenoid okay. and then this L is called the L is called the uh, inductance of this coil inductance of this. Now, L equal to L equal to capital phi by n by i. Okay. Now, this phi this phi is basically B A, B A, okay. magnetic field B A, okay. Okay. so I think this I did mistake it is not A, uh, phi is I N A, phi is I N A. 
So, this uh, B is I n here it will be mu 0 or mu okay, permeability. So, B is mu 0 I n. Okay. A will be when I will write not magnetic field flux. Okay. So, it is mu 0 I n a for air uh, pore. Okay. If you use some other magnetic force, so this that will be mu permeability. So, now B a n by I. So, now again B is mu 0 mu 0 uh, uh, mu 0 i n and A is there and this uh, I think it, it has to this capital N and now this capital N is now small n as I told this uh, number of trans per unit length. So, if length is L of this solenoid so, this n I can write n l okay, n l now uh, divide by i. So, this i i will go and then you will get. So, basically you are getting this uh, l yeah. So, this is basically l l l it is l. So, l I am getting mu 0 uh, n square l a. Okay. So, it is a basically constant you know number of trans per unit length, this is the length of the solenoid, this is the area cross section area of this of this solenoid area of this solenoid. Okay. So, measure is the permeability of air. Okay. So, this is the inductance. Okay. So, now here from here basically you can calculate the inductance and I will later on discuss in different times, so how useful this is. You see, this is used to produce the magnetic field in the laboratory, uh, electromagnet to, to get the electromagnet to use this one. This is one application, great application. Okay. For that, you have to use this type of solenoid. So, basically, we use two solenoid uh, for electromagnet or is called Helmholtz coil okay, to produce magnetic. This is nothing but this. Okay. Uh, then, another application. Yes, uh, it, it is used as a search coil you know to sense the magnetic field it is a magnetic field sensor. This is used as a magnetic field sensor to sense the magnetic field or magnetization or magnetic moment. So, this is used as a, as a search coil uh, it is a detector kind of things. Okay. So, there this Faraday's law induction law is used. So, if from magnetization or from magnetic field whatever flux uh, comes and link if it is linked with this and if this flux changes with time. So, there will be uh, it will uh, there will be uh, induced EMF in this coil. Now, from induced EMF you will get the current. So, if you make and measure this current. So, you can correlate with the flux that means, you can correlate with the magnetic field or uh, magnetization or magnetic moment. So, basically measuring this current electrical signal one can find out this magnetic field or magnetization or magnetic moment. So, for that purpose this coil is used. Okay. So, when you are able to fabricate yourself this inductor, capacitor, resistor as, as our definition so, then you will be think to use them for different application. So, for commercial from commercial uh, inductor resistance uh, it is it is very difficult uh, to think this type of application. So, that is why I, I showed you uh, these three important component resistor, capacitor and uh, inductor. Uh, so, from definition how can you can fabricate and there are enormous application of this. So, I will stop here, uh, I will continue discussion in next class. Thank you.